So here we are at Smoking Grill Lounge, live on location in sunny Hollywood, California. Yeah, it's Smoking Milligan. Gorilla Lounge. Oh, February, it's February 1st. It's February 1st. And it's like what, gonna be 80 degrees today? It's 80, we have shorts on, we have sunglasses on. Yeah. Um, everybody uh, back east and up north is hating us right now. Yeah, because pretty much, and that's I why you moved out here from back east, because I, of all this stuff, huh? I had jeans on and I came out to shoot and I was like nope not doing that yeah so you get your drink handy I want to make sure you can stay hydrated it's over to your left oh there it is so what we're gonna smoke today is a mystery surprise. to Dave it's I surprise. had this idea and uh, and so here here it is okay one wow. for you one for me oh I don't get to pick huh Normally I let, pe pick? Here, Normally I let pick, people pick because both. then they can accuse me of giving them the plugged one. <laughs> they can't accuse me because they say that I give everybody a plugged cigar. No, this is fine. This is fine? I'll take this. Does yeah. it feel good? It feels plugged, but that's okay. It Just feels kidding. I'm plugged. messing with you. I'm so messing with you. Um, so the size is... I'll wait for the helicopter to go over. I don't know if you guys can hear us with the helicopter. There, you know what? The ambient noise does come through because I shot a video in the backyard uh, yesterday or day before yesterday and the guys building the Winchester house behind me. Oh, even with the... Yeah, the but it was a lot better. Okay. Anyway, so, okay. Uh, the size is a Carlotta. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's a nice little kind of... I what is know, that, like about a 40 ring gauge, 38? Zero. I think it's more like a 38. That does not look like a 40. That's skinnier than a Fundy or a Cueva Lancero. Yeah, it's definitely a thinner ring gauge cigar. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you were going to mention, uh, or we were going to mention, that the next video that we're gonna do mm, is gonna right. be a smoke along, right? We should talk about that right at the top. Right now. All right, uh, did you choose cigars for the smoke along? We're doing the um, uh, Arturo Fuente 858 Natural. Okay, so normally Dave and I, we smoke a cigar, we review it, hopefully you're smoking something while you're watching us uh, talk our heads off. But uh, we had this idea that maybe we would pick a cigar ahead of time, way before we upload the video, and something that's really that we like and also that you can find literally everywhere and Dave had the great idea of doing the Fuente 858 which is in every humidor everywhere right? yeah it's my go-to when I'm on the road or whatever it is I, you know if I see a bunch of stuff in the humidor I don't really particularly care for at least I know that I can do the 858 yeah. and that's gonna gonna do me and it's not expensive and it's good yeah I mean easy smoke here in LA though LA prices it was around nine bucks a stick Oh yeah. So I normally you if you it pick them up online or whatever, or six, six bucks. bucks a stick and probably brick and mortars outside of California or New York, you're probably gonna get it for about seven bucks yeah. a stick, probably somewhere around there. Yeah. But it's a nice size cigar. I mean, it's uh, it's almost like a, I don't know, almost like this size, except the ring gauge is longer, like yeah. about maybe a 46 or 44, or something mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. So if you feel like doing the smoke along with us for the next video, pick <laughs> yourself up a Fuente 858 and You'll be able to taste, hopefully, some of the same flavors that we're getting off the cigar. We'll give you flavor notes like we normally do. And then you can send in your flavor notes in the notes on that show. And that'll be yeah. awesome. Yeah, make a comment or whatever it is. Yeah, and that's the reason I picked that is because the Fuentes are pretty good at uh, keeping the blend in the of the cigar pretty much consistent. Oh, yeah. So Especially uh, those core yeah. lines. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty good because they have the tobacco, just like Davidoff is consistent and um, Padron is consistent and everything like that. So, yep. look, I got a fancy guillotine today. I got a Prometheus. What'd I do with mine? I you had, had it in your hand, ago. I thought. I did. It must have fallen down. We are, we're just falling apart here. Nice draw. Good draw? Mm-hmm. And um, the deal with this it? one, uh, can you cut it for me? The deal with this one is um, I know what these cigars are, and uh, I did not roll them. It's not uh, it's not a Paul Bryant custom or anything like that, or LA Cigar Guy custom. It's um, it's something that people know about. Um, I don't think you've smoked them before, though. Okay. And uh, we're gonna smoke them, and um, I've smoked uh, one of these before, and Dave has smoked zero. So your first smoking experience on this, and my second, and um, and we're gonna see how we how we feel about them. Okay. 
real easy light. I got my big tank lighter here. For the 38 ring gauge cigar. Remind me to try to find that cutter. It's around here somewhere. Huh. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let you say something first. Okay. What are you pairing this with, Dave? A Pepsi. Because I couldn't find Coke. I stopped Great. off and got Tommy's today for me and my friend here for breakfast. You should tell them what Tommy's is because they're not everywhere. Oh, it's a LA thing. So it started on, I think, Rampart and something or other off of Rampart that's in LA. Right. And uh, that's the original one. And then they're kind of all throughout the Southern California area. <clears throat> and basically it's a chili burger and their chili is very uh, unique, Yeah, I would say. Um, it's not, it doesn't have beans in it. It's that really thick uh, chili. Kind of tasty. Maybe the people in Cincinnati with the Skyline chili would have a reference to. Um, uh, you know, I've had Skyline chili. And I actually, I like Skyline better, I think. Mm. Because Skyline chili, they do that like chili size over there where they put it on uh, spaghetti. Um, or they'll put it on a burger or they'll put it on whatever. Um, I will say the times that I've had Skyline chili where they've like, sent cans of it out here because I have friends from the Cincinnati and the Ohio area. Um, it has not been good, but if you get it in the restaurants, it's pretty good for, for like fairly cheap fast food. Right. So anyway, so it's kind of a liken to that, no beans. And then, you know, you get your burger patty and then um, you get onions, pickles, tomatoes, and you can get cheese on there. I never usually get cheese. I just usually get the burger. And one good thing about Tommy's too is if you order extra of anything, they don't charge you for it. So I usually get extra chili, extra tomatoes. And uh, anyway, basically you got to eat the burger with the knife and a fork. I know that's probably blasphemy to a lot of people, but anyway, Which that was our did. breakfast. <laughs> it was. I'm not going to get all that all over me. So it is really a mess. It is. It's a hot mess. So anyway, that's what we had for breakfast today. And now we're smoking a nice cigar. There's you know, actually a bit of a spiciness on the roof of my mouth and mm -hmm. then down the center of my tongue right now um and it's kind of lingering too it's a pretty long finish actually i agree on the cigar um the, it's really long and it's but like i said it's like more of a spicy not like the kitchen or the cracked pepper more like a kind of a spicy kind mm -hmm. of a note that's going down the center of the tongue and the roof of the mouth a lot of times i tend to think of the long finish cigars as being particularly oily filler and that's why the, the smoke has this coating effect on the tongue. It's also the smoke production for a little cigar is enormous. Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, personally, like, okay, I just did, a part on the other channel, I did a Partagas Siri, Siri D number six, which I'm not a big fan mm -hmm. of that profile, of that uh -huh. uh, format, either uh -huh. a six or the five. I'm not a big fan of Me it. Me neither, it's just too small. Yeah, you know what, one of one guy left a comment on there, he says, those are like cigarettes. Why yeah. would I smoke something like that? Right. So I would much rather do a cigar like this, you know, with a smaller ring gauge that's maybe a lot longer, maybe, uh -huh. you know, five inches longer. You're gonna get about the same amount of smoke time, probably a little bit more with this mm -hmm. than that one. But you get, especially with something that's got some age to it and something that's got an open draw on it like this, you're gonna get just about as much smoke production or more smoke production from that as you do from like some big fat ring gauge cigar that's got a lot of velado in there and not a lot of everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's me on my high horse or my soapbox. How do you feel about appearance and construction so far? Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as it goes for that, you always make me put my glasses on. Sort of a medium veined, you know, average number of veins uh, on the wrapper. It's not particularly red, it's not particularly dark. Yeah, it's like kind of like uh, what the Col a Colorado uh, a, is it Colorado Oscuro? I don't know. I'm not like a big you know g uh, cigar guy when it comes to all that. I mean, I'm gonna let all the experts uh -huh. uh, you know do talk about that. But I think Colorado is it Colorado Oscuro is down toward the green side. Colorado Claro is the green, and then you go up. So yeah, it's more like a brown paper sack. Let's yeah. just call it like that. I think of Oscuro as being a little darker. 
Yes. Um, also, it, it's a dull wrapper. It doesn't have any real sheen. Not a real it. sheen Even on it. We're in the sun here and we're still not seeing anything. Um, it is relatively evenly fermented. It's a little bit mottled. There's definitely, you can see that it used to be green. You know, it's places. not as mottled as quite a bit of the other um, Cuban or New World stuff that I've seen. Um, it's got some spots in there, whatever it is, but mine doesn't look that mottled at all. Interesting. I mean, to me, that doesn't look, that's not mottled to me. Yeah. Mottled you is when you see the model. really big spots in there, like yeah. huge modeling. It's not super lumpy either. It's got a, it's pretty nice. I mean, whoever rolled this cigar did a good job, I think, of rolling it. Real nice triple cap. You can see where the binder, what, something right in there, right? See that? Oh, interesting, yeah. Right? Almost like a fold. Yeah. And then it was, maybe the binder was folded right there. And then they put the wrapper over it and it kind of smoothed it a little bit, but not completely. Or maybe the filler, the binder went over the filler and did that when it went in the mold or whatever it was. But they're really, they did, I mean, it is a really nicely made cigar. It's very round for mm. and uniform for as few leaves as could fit in here, you know? To it's me, that's a lot. One binder, one wrapper, and maybe two filler leaves. I mean, what more can you put in there? Depending on how they do the filler, because sometimes they do like and partial and leaves and everything like that in there with that. So, I mean, it just depends on how they decide that they're going to do that. So, I don't know. Burns great. Yeah. Yeah. Nice white ash. Mm -hmm. Bit of that coin stacking going on there. You're getting that on yours. Yeah, I guess I'm getting a little bit, but yours more so. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess you gave me the good one. Damn it. <laughs> People accuse I me of. I marked him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, if you're seeing any um, like people walk by or hearing trucks or cars that sound like they're going by right next to us, that was all added in post. That's special effects. Yeah, we're right. we're sitting in a, a studio room with a green screen right now. Yeah. Actually, it's getting a little bright. We might have to uh, move the chairs because I'm thinking that I'm gonna check what it looks like on screen. Right anyway, it's getting a little bright. We're kind of out here winging it, but uh, whatever. Winging it, this is what happens with rough and tumble uh, guerrilla filmmaking. Yeah. It's, it's not true. always gonna be perfect. Mm -mm. It's gonna have some rough edges. Look at that, are you getting this? The kind of like dark burn in the center? Oh, you asked yours already. Yeah, it fell all over my shirt. Interesting, huh? Still has kind of that spiciness in there. There's a... I want to say... Yeah, that spiciness is really predominant in there, though. A little bit of tobacco. There's some note in there that I'm trying to think... what that is. I'm getting a really sharp, um, like, lemongrass. Mm. There's a citrusy vegetal note, and it kind of tastes like lemongrass to me. Right in the middle. Like an oily lemongrass. Yeah, yeah. Um. Really pleasant smoke, though. I love this format. Now, I like the format of the cigar, definitely. I do like that a lot. It's, um, like I said, I would rather smoke something like this than a big old fat cigar. I just don't yeah. understand. I mean, I don't, you know, actually somebody left a comment on the Spartacus and said that it's, um, it's, uh, it's a wintertime Michigan smoke. Uh, because it's so small. Yep. But I've smoked cigar like uh, I have relatives in Toronto, so I'll go up to Toronto, and um, I'll smoke out back of the house there outside. And what I find when I smoke a cigar in really really cold weather, I don't get a really good experience with it. And you know maybe it's because I'm just cold or whatever. I mean that's probably got part of it to do with it, but. I don't know, maybe the weather or something like that, you need more moisture in the air? Or? Yeah, it tends, uh, especially if it's really cold, it tends to be very dry. The <clears> air <throat> tends to be very dry. And right. And your wrapper goes from, you know, properly humidified to very hot and very dry. 
um, and then immediately cold. Um, and you know, you get split wrappers and your palate's going to be off because you know, you're drawing cold, really cold air into the cigar. It's heating up really fast and then hitting your palate right after that. It's just not the same. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah. If you need to smoke and you can only go outside, smoke outside. Yeah. And then usually when I'm in Canada, I'll just buy a bunch of Quinteros anyway because they're the cheapest cigar that you can mm. get and I enjoy smoking them. They're probably still, what, 15 bucks? Uh, yeah, I think around 10 or 11. Oh, that's cheaper Canadian. than I would have expected that you could even get a Cuban cigar for 10 bucks. Well, they're Quinteros and nobody, uh, you know, nobody likes them or whatever. But obviously they sell the shit out of them somewhere because... Live and learn. Yeah. Smoke and film and learn. I'm telling you though, like that finish on the palate is still there. The long uh, kind of heavy finish? Full body. Mm. Definitely full body. I mean, for me. I mean, I've got that finish on the palate, that kind of spiciness on there. You know uh, what? I agree with you. I'm gonna, I was going to say medium plus, but I think it's more like a full yeah. to full minus. Yeah. It is announcing its presence with authority, as they said in Bull Durham. Remember that movie? Yeah. I don't remember that and line Robin? in Bull Durham. I don't remember. What are you doing? I'm going to announce my presence with authority. Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah. You yeah. announce your presence with authority? And then he tells the guy he's throwing a fastball, and he hits it out of the park. That's right. Meat. Meat. And there's a meaty cigar. It's a meaty little cigar. It is really meaty. It's like the Susan Sarandon of cigars. I don't know what that means. I'm mm. almost halfway on this guy. Speaking of and cigars. by the way, I'm still I still have that little hole. And I think that means that it was the, you know, what do they call it? Intubato uh, rolling method and it just has a hole down the center of the leaf. Are you seeing yours that on yours at all? Tiny bit. Not as pronounced as mine. Mine's like in a little cave. Oh yeah, you can see like even without my glasses on, I can see like little circles mm -hmm. all over the place. It's not affecting the smoking at all. It's just weird to see it. Yeah. Now's the time to roll the uh, Hollywood sign. I'm smoking faster than you today. Well, because I'm fidgeting. Yeah, because you're fidgeting. I'm. Uh, you're, I'm you're being, doing technical stuff. I'm directing. Yeah. So it's hard. It's hard when you have that dual role. I get to just be talent. Yeah, you're the talent. I'm the director slash talent. Yeah, you're like Mel Gibson in Braveheart, and <laughs> I'm like uh, the um, the Scottish young Scottish uh, prince. Mm. I will betray you in the end, but hopefully the cigar won't. How's that for a segue back into the cigar? You're uh, retro hailing. What are you getting on the retro? Yeah, it's that note in there. I want to say, God, I'm trying to put my finger on what that frickin', it's not a fruity kind of a retro. It's not herby. Um, a bit of like, a little bit of tobacco-y, but not toasted tobacco. Uh, Are you talking about that like kind of high fizzy note? Yeah, it's like. It's not harsh. Floral. It's a little bit floral to me. A little bit. Kind of like maybe <laughs> like fermented carbonated flour. Yeah. You know what? There's a there's a almost like a floral resin kind of a. a note That's there. what it is. It's a floral note in there, like a little bit floral, and it's not a. Uh, not that young floral, soapy floral, but actually like a floral kind of a note in there. Along with that, still that heavy finish on the palate, it's still there. Now the, the spiciness is tamped back and it's more oily yeah. on the tongue. Um, and it's kind of shifted because before it was like kind of in the roof of the mouth, on the tongue, uh, through the nose. And now it's uh, the, that heavy finish has just shifted down to the, um, the palate, the tongue below. There's a slight little hint of that spiciness in the back of the tongue. I'm but still getting some spice, but it's interesting. You're able, is this your first cigar of the day? Yeah. Great, mine too. Um, it's interesting that you're able to retrohale 
you know, do your typical dragon retro hail where you're letting the, the whole thing go through because it, it it's tastes kind of like a young cigar, as it should, because it is a kind of a young cigar. Um, and it's um, it's a little hard on the nose for me right now. And I got nose of steel. I guess you do have nose of steel. I can retro a Liga. Oh my God. Yeah. And then everything you eat for the next week tastes like mineral oil? <laughs> like, yeah, motor oil. <laughs> motor oil. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know what? You're right. The uh, the spiciness. So so the spiciness just kind of it's kind of alternating in between that floral, spicy, um, tobacco, that oiliness. But it's not alternating on the oiliness and the heaviness on the finish. It's just it's there. It's there. It's it's there. I mean, it, this cigar is saying, hey. How are you? How are yeah? I'm absolutely. here. Good morning. Good afternoon. And good night. <laughs> it's definitely there. But. You know, all, it's not an off-putting uh, experience, definitely. I wouldn't call it off-putting at all. It's rather nice. Well, you smoke a lot of Cubans, as do I. You smoke a lot of non-Cubans, yep. as do I. Would you say it's a Cuban or a non-Cuban? Mm. Well. That's what, they, that's what the sommeliers always do, right? The sommeliers, when they do wine, uh, like a blind tasting, which is basically what you're doing, they go, New world, old world, which means is it essentially is it California or is it France? Maybe Italy. And that's where they start. And you like that whole new world, old world thing for Cuba, non-Cuba, or non-Cuba, Cuba. Yeah. I don't. I know, you like to say Cuban, non-Cuban. Cuban, non-Cuban. Because it's all new world. Yeah, unless you're in England. I mean, you, you could have been in England for a thousand years before Cuba ever became a thing. <clears throat> ah. I mean, 16th century, not exactly new now, right? But in the grand scheme, pretty new. Hmm. And I will say I picked this one particularly because I knew it was a little tricky in that regard. Yeah. So I'm putting you on the spot. You know, I'm gonna have to say non-Cuban. Interesting. I'm gonna say non-Cuban. It was a coin toss. Um, you're right. Uh, However, in the uh, reviews that I've heard of and seen of this, a lot of people have struggled with that one. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, the thing about it is, though, is usually with a non-Cuban, you really kind of get that really minerally kind of a uh, finish on there. And it's <laughs> not so bad, really. Yeah. I mean, it's not, but there's just something about it with the girth of that spice oh, to smoke. me that said non-Cuban, mm -hmm. but I mean, you know, in the end, I'm not a sommelier. I'm not an expert. I'm not anything like that. Well, you smoke a lot of cigars. You have a palate that you've, you've trained pretty well. <clears throat> Are you getting twang off of it? Did you get any Just, while you were smoking it? No, like, the, like I said, that spiciness in there, I mean, may quantify or qualify for like a bit of a twang on there. But I mean, it's, it's, it's nice. It's almost as if uh, the tobacco has been aged a little bit before it was rolled, maybe. That's probably uh, probably not too far off. I wouldn't say it's been aged for years. But no, for a been, while. been aged a little bit. And whoever did this cigar, they didn't, because um, a lot of times they can get heavy handed with that Lajero in there and it can just be quite off-putting. And I think maybe that's where the mineralness comes mm -hmm. in, like heavy handed with a lot of the New World stuff. We but, don't get these kinds of views at your place. No, no we don't. The lovely view of the mountains here, the Hollywood signs up there. You're going to cut that in, right? I did one B-roll of the Hollywood. I didn't want to get run over. These these guys 
it's a busy street. These guys, like, they don't stop. They don't, at the stop sign, I would say 75% of people actually stop. Yeah. Maybe 50. And everybody else just, California rolls on through. Pretty much. <clears throat> Maybe it's the rolling process, too. They really t did their um, due diligence with rolling this cigar and doing that, you know, intubado like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the, the Cubans don't do that. They fold it over, right? They do the folds. The accordion style? Yeah. They do mostly. Entujado, they don't do. they call that, I think. Yeah. It's weird that it's entujado and entubado. It's very close, and you can almost not hear the difference. Yeah, but that, you know, the airflow in this. The thing is, though, is if you get this wrong, the airflow is sucks. Right. When you get this wrong. But right. when you get it right, it really um, does quite well. So, and I would say also on that note that you said two leaves in there. It looks like there's more than two. It looks like there's three or four in there. It's interesting how much of the structure of this cigar you can see from the ash. Yeah, it looks like three or four in there hmm. with, the, with the binder around that thing and then the filler. But I, I would say there's like probably three leaves in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we can find out and we can put it in the show notes. Rolled up in there? Yeah. But like I said, it wasn't heavy handed. I mean, it is spicy, but well, you know, maybe it's not, maybe it's just that my nose is so desensitized to spice. Do you but want me to feed you some more clues? Go ahead. I mean, because it's also relevant to the cigar itself. Okay. Um, you probably know by name who the roller is. The pretty famous high-level roller. Since we're talking about the construction and how excellent it is, um, somebody like, you would know. Like a Hamlet? That's who it is. Okay. Hamlet Paredes, Cuban, right? Mm -hmm. Used to roll in uh, Tijuana at the LCDH. Yes, that's right. I read up on him mm -hmm. again, because uh, I read up on him before, and then now I just redid a read on him. Yep. And then uh, I think he is in Canada now. Is he? With, okay. With his family, yeah. Okay. But he's everywhere. I mean, I'll see him on Facebook like, oh, I'm in Florida now. I'm mm. in North Dakota. I'm yeah. in Denver. Once you get out of Cuba, you can do what you want. Yeah. You're a free citizen of the world. He goes to um, uh, Maxmar a lot. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he, he's been to Maxmar a few times. Just as a customer, or does he roll there? Or yeah, what? rolling and, you know, because oh, he's got his, his line of stuff. I haven't met him. Yes, he has his line. Uh, he has uh, actually a couple now of different, uh, it's the same line, the Hamlet, uh, I want to say red and green band with a big H, big mm -hmm. white H in the middle, and I think there's a couple of different uh, wrapper and blend versions. But this is not one of them. So the tobacco... Is it Dominican tobacco? I don't believe so. I think it's Nicaraguan tobacco. Is it? Um, it's most likely a blend, and I don't think they said what the blend was. It's very possible that there's some Dominican in there. I would guess, if somebody told me to smoke this blind and I didn't know what it was, I'd probably lean Dominican and blend also because it's just, it's smooth. Yeah. It doesn't taste like that you know, heavy, spicy, volcanic, peppery, yeah. Nicaraguan tobacco. Kind of like what Dion's, uh, like the Epernay line, right. what he does. And I've been reading up on that Epernay line a little bit more, and I guess he doesn't use really a whole lot of Lajero in that. It's mostly Seco mm. and Velado. I don't know if they have revealed, um, good guess, by the way, on Hamlet, um, if they've revealed the exact blend of this or will. Um, but I'll tell you what it is. Now, because you may, you may or may not have heard of it, um, it's sold by Rob Ayala off FOH, Friends of Habano. Okay. It is a collaboration between Rob and Hamlet. Oh, it's their FOH cigar. Yes. It's, um, it's called the Nudies line because it has basically no packaging. It's a bundled cigar with no band, um, and uh, I think they're about in the 9 to $10 range. Um, would you say that's a fair price? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, cigar. that's a fair, especially when you're dealing with Australia. Right, but like take that out of the equation. Just as a U.S. consumer, you, you find this cigar, you smoke one. Well, yeah, nine bucks, definitely, Good value. because um, I like to smoke that Le Grand Class Rex, which is about uh, uh, two inches longer than this uh, right here, and that's like eight bucks here. And that cigar is phenomenal. Yeah, that's a great cigar. I love smoking that cigar. That's one of the one of the newer cigars that, that Dion has done that I really enjoy. I, I like the Epernay line a lot, mm -hmm. um, just because it doesn't kill my nose. And then I like that Le Grand Class Rex. I just like that. Yeah. So no, nine, ten bucks for this cigar. Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely buy these. So I think all of them are actually rolled by Hamlet as well. Mm. I may be wrong on that, but I, I think they are because the batches that they've released and they've only released two batches so far have been pretty small. First one sold out lickety split, and uh, I don't know. I think the second one you might still be able to if you go on Friends of Habanos and go into their. Uh, store into the cart, uh, you might still be able to buy some there. Um, if not, they will come out periodically as they produce more of them. There's two sizes. This is called the Carlotta, the N1, as they call it, the Nudy One, and then there's an N2, which is a Lancero. It's basically okay. the same ring gauge longer. So it's like a Corona Especial and a Lancero, and a, mm -hmm. right, a Lancero. And the blend, if I'm not mistaken on this, is based off of the Partigas Siri du Connoisseur number no. three from 1997. Mm. Okay. And the format. It's basically <coughs> their their attempt using, and they say strictly non-Cuban tobacco. They've been asked. There's no Cuban tobacco in here apparently. Okay. So the blend is based off of as close as they could get to that cigar using non-Cuban tobacco. So that that totally makes sense with me with that spice in there mm. then, um, and not a whole lot of sweetness. Right. No, it's not a sweet cigar. No. And, you know, it has, like I said, that, that spice with uh, that hint of that floral in there. Um, and tobacco. <laughs> like, I mean, when I'm smoking a Partagas, I mean, that's usually what I'm going to get. Something like that. I mean, yeah. the older age Partagas, though, um, they'll have a tendency to get sweeter with the age. Like, when you get down the road, like 15 years mm -hmm. to 30 years old. Right. The cigar will get sweeter, um, especially the older ones. The and new more ones. more floral, too. Uh, some of the old 898s eight, I've smoked have been real floral. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I can see how they probably do that with that. So, what do you think about Kobe? That yeah, bush just went by, it had RIP Kobe on there. Well, uh, I don't know if you got a chance to watch the Lakers tribute to Kobe Bryant last night. Pretty I watched much, it online. Uh, every NBA team has, has done a tribute, or a lot of NBA teams. Boston actually did a really nice one on Thursday night. Um, and um, a couple of particularly, a couple of things really stand out about the tribute last night. One was the uh, Usher Amazing Grace opening, which was <coughs> a real tearjerker. Uh, and, and amazing, and, and just you, you couldn't pick something better to open a ceremony like that, I think. The other was LeBron James apparently throwing away his uh, notes of the speech that they wanted him to read and just freeballing it. Yeah. Um, and then, um, what was the third thing? Oh, the uh, player introductions for the Lakers. All of the Lakers wore either 8 or 24 on their... Um, on their uniforms, and every single Laker was introduced as Kobe Bryant. In his 20th season from Lower Marion High School, Kobe Bryant, every single player. They didn't use player names. So that was really uh Were you watching really classy, the game at, really at nice. uh, Watched it at the V Cut last night. How come you didn't go to Scar Warehouse? They had that Romacraft event. You're kind mm -hmm. of a Romacraft whore. I do, I really like, but I went to an event the previous night at the V-Cut. I know you did. They had a uh, cigar roller, and he was actually there last night, and I got to talk to him a little bit, which okay. was cool. Um, he gave me a couple of wrapper leaves that I could kind of stretch around with and play around with, and it's always nice to have your, your hands on tobacco leaves. Mm -hmm. They're so cool. It feels like skin. It feels like a thin piece of, like, animal skin. Very supple. Yeah. Very supple. Um, 
and so that was fun. But yeah, I watched it. Uh, watched the Lakers tribute at the V Cut, okay. and then the game, which the Lakers lost, which I was happy about because I'm not a Laker fan. I think Skip is going to be a little upset at you that you didn't go to the Roma Craft well, event at Cigar Warehouse. If Skip had been there, which I'm almost sure he wasn't. No, he wasn't there. I, I probably would have gone. I don't even know if Mike was there. Mm. Usually one of those guys uh, will let me know or somebody will let me know that they're going to be there. I think they just had an event and had cigar specials and whatever. Maybe Mike was there. I don't know. Um, I think Mike was there. I think he well, was. Well, then I should have stopped by. I mean, I could have gone later. But the game went really late because it didn't start till almost 8 o'clock because of the tribute. And they ha I, I saw, because Cigar Warehouse posted a few Instagram pics on there. Apparently, they had a bunch of black Irish cigars there, too, as well, so... Well, some people got real lucky. Now, the other thing about that I like about Warehouse is after they do an event like that, uh, particularly with a company like Romacraft, which they really do events well, they bring a, usually quite a lot of, you know, the rarer stuff and, you know, event-only kind of stuff. And, and at Warehouse, because they have a large humidor, they'll leave some of that. So you may still be able to get some Black Irish even today or this week at uh, at Warehouse if they haven't if they didn't run out last night. Just checking to see if that red dot's still there. Red Look, dot means go, right? Looks like it's recording. All right. Hopefully so, we don't have to do this all over again. Back to the cigar though. Um, I bought a uh, a five pack. Uh, somebody was nice enough on um, online humidor or FOH. I forget which to buy a few bundles and then split them up into five packs for people, four or five packs. So instead of getting two and two, I got two and three, and the three that I got was the Lancero, so that's the one that I smoked before. Uh, I did smoke it pretty close to when it shipped to me, so I really didn't give it its due in terms of settling down in the humidor and everything. These have now been in my humidor for over a month, so they should be good to go. Okay. Um, and I'm having a better experience with this one than I did with the Lancero. And it remains to be seen when I smoke the next Lancero whether it is that I like this size better than the Lancero or whether I just didn't give it enough time. Glad we ate a uh, burger though because I'm starting to feel a little bit of that ah. punchy. And even from a, a relatively diminutive cigar you're still feeling it. Yeah. But I, you know. Also you've got, you've got your Pepsi. So we've talked about this before. Anytime you're, you know, actually feeling the nicotine part of the strength of a cigar, you can uh, just drink something sweet, sweet soda with actual sugar in it, and um, it'll cut that. Yeah, for you. exactly. And that's what I've been doing lately, as opposed to doing the Coke Zero. Mm -hmm. I stopped doing yeah, that's that. That's not going to help you. Stop no doing the Coke Zero. So I just do regular Coke or. Pepsi, and it has a tendency to cut that uh, that alkalinity on the palate too, to where it gets you back to a more normal pH. So uh -huh. definitely, um, nice, good thing. That's I'm a Toyota to... emblem right there. That guy did Toyota. Yeah, we have a uh, local graffiti artist, and apparently he's a Toyota fan. <laughs> yeah, along with all of the Pomleys that just decided to dump right there on the. Yeah, I was out walking uh, Arthur the other day and uh, the leaves were falling down all around us because it was super windy for a couple of days, a couple of nights here in LA. And there's piles of these, there's probably eight, eight or 10 of these piles every block up the street because it's just lined with palm trees. So, uh, <laughs> and I was, so I haven't been over to his house. He, I didn't go, over, I haven't been to his house in a while. And- um, Yeah, Dave. And uh, so his dog, I saw the dogs, in, the dog in the pictures, right? This little tiny, cute uh, dog, kind of like a terrier. Pork bow of, terrier. Yeah, and so from China. So um, anyway, I come to his house today, and the dog is like really tall and like big. For I thought he'd be like a lot smaller, yeah. more like that poodle right there, like that. He's that, got a little dog body and a tiny little head, but he's got this weird long neck <laughs> and long legs. Yeah, the legs are like, I mean, should be on a medium-sized dog. Y yes. It's kind of funny. I mean, I would love to see him run, like, with those spindly little legs. Like, Dude, he runs like the wind. He's incredibly agile. He makes these, like, 45-degree turns on other dogs when they're chasing him around the dog park. And uh, he's got hops like you wouldn't believe. 
um, he'll jump up five feet. Just boom, I believe it onto a onto a ledge or something. He loves checking Plus stuff out. Plus, he's like always. You say he goes and he's like sits. And the thing is, he was like under the table. Yeah. And he was in downward dog. Yep. And that's he was just like sitting there like that, in downward dog. He spends about twenty percent of his life in downward dog. So that's like ready to pounce up. So maybe that helps his muscles to go I higher. Don't know. I, don't know. I feel like he's he's just always stretching. He's he does the downward dog and then whatever the reverse of that is, where the rear part goes down and the and the front part goes up, and he does that full stretch every time before we take him out for a walk. He does it all the time anyway. He's just always comfortable. He sleeps really weird because he has a long neck. His uh, head goes like a goose and kind of folds over on oh, itself. He kind of tucks in. And likes to sleep like that a lot of the time. Okay. Yeah. He's a weirdo. Very cute dog, though. Very cute. Mm, he's cute. Although, I offered a name up because he did a naming thing for his dog. Yeah, we took up took us about a week to come up with a name. Arthur. His name was Prince, originally. We settled so on Arthur. So Prince, he's, no, he's a king, so Arthur. But it seeing was, how you smoke cigars, that dog should be named Winston. I mean, come on, Winston. I, um, I offered up a few cigar-themed names, and the girlfriend shot every one of them down. But Winston Churchill was, like, not just a cigar guy. He was the prime minister of England and ushered them through World War II and yeah. did a bunch of great things. Now, Gallipoli was one of his downfalls, but he made up for it later on down mm. the road. Anyway, I offered up Winston, but... He's actually named after, do you ever watch Peaky Blinders on Netflix? Really good show. The first couple episodes, like, it's slow, it's a little hard to get into, all the atmosphere and the acting is really good. Um, but after that, man, you just will blaze through it, it's so good. But he's actually named after this character, Arthur, uh, on the show, who is sort of the most angry, murderous guy. And he's not named, named after him for personality, he just kind of looks like him. Well, he did growl a lot when he was under the table. Well, he was a little bit of a growler. You know, he's, he doesn't remember meeting you. So. He never has. Yeah. It's his first time. And I love dogs, and dogs are usually pretty good with me, and I usually, because a lot of people, they don't know where, like, if you just go at a dog and, like, start petting him on yeah. top of the head, that's not what you want to do with a dog. Yeah. You want the dog to get to know you and come up to you, and then you kind of go under yeah. the chin, on the body. If you do the, the hand, he will always come up and smell your hand. And then if you go to pet him on the top of the head, he just doesn't like being pet on the top of the head. Well, he likes the neck and the body. But that's a that's a dominant yeah. thing on there. So you're trying and to you don't want to dominate a dog, especially a dog that you just met. And especially an alpha uh, oriented dog, which even though he's kind of little, he has an alpha right. orientation to him. Yeah. So well, he's got that king name, Arthur. Yeah. I don't care about Peaky Blinders. So another thing too is that <laughs> so this guy talking about Netflix. And then we were with uh, Dalip Rao, who uh, is an actor, and because uh, we're in Hollywood, and he knows all these famous, I don't know shit. I mean, I know people that smoke cigars, and that's about it. He knows like all these writers and actors. Anyway, we're with Dalip, and these two guys are talking about stuff that they watch. They're really big oh, Trekkies. Yeah. They're big Trekkies. Star Wars, they're like, they had dissected it. So I'm smoking, we're smoking cigars probably for a couple hours. And they dissected probably the whole nine episodes of Star Wars while I was there. So yeah, I've never- Yeah, if you get into Star Wars with the leap, I mean, he's a sci-fi guy and- Yeah. Like he's super, he's more into Star Wars. I'm, I would say more into Star Trek, but we both like both. Yeah, you guys are definitely uh, <clears throat> on the, on that, See, I, I, I mean, I watched the original Star Trek. I'm more of a, a classic 60s, movie guy. Yeah. CBS Star Trek. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a classic film guy because, like, you know, I'm talking to them. And I'm like, hey, I got to watch movies with you guys one of these days, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, of course, he's like, well, what do you watch? And I'm like, well, you know, I just watched Less Than Zero. <laughs> um, <laughs> he called them classic movies. You reeled off, like, a bunch of late, mid to late 80s movies, and you called them classic movies. Well, the, really the Sting. The Sting, yeah, okay, that was a while back. Yeah, um, Maltese yeah, Falcon. Thing. That's classic. Yeah. Because it's black and white. Classic film noir. I think of classic movies mostly as being black and white movies. Oh, you can't say that, because from here to, it's from, uh, from An Affair to Remember, that's a classic movie, that's Cary Grant, that's in color. The Cincinnati Kid, 1961, are, that's in color. There are movies that are in color that are definitely classic movies. Lawrence of Arabia. Mm-hmm. Chinatown. 1973. 
uh, Chariots of Fire. That was around 1980 or 79, mm -hmm. somewhere around there? Gandhi, I mean, they're in the mode, though, of a classic movie, right? They have that pace and that epic scale. The and French Connection. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's a classic movie. Love Gene Hackman. You know, and the thing about Gene Hackman is that he pretty much had that look from the French Connection all the way up to um, The Quick and the Dead. Oh, dude, he, he looked never, the same. He never changed. Right? Never changed. He Occasionally never... a mustache. Man, I'm telling you. So, yeah, so, I mean, in a modern classic, I would say, you know, I think Less Than Zero will qualify as kind of a modern classic for me personally, even though I'm not as uh, adept. Wow, the Less Than Zero people are going to be really happy about hearing that. Wasn't Robert Downey Jr. in that? Yeah. Yeah. Andrew McCarthy, Jamie Gertz. Jamie Gertz. Uh, David Jamie Spader. Gertz. James Spader. James Spader. James Spader's oh, in that. Oh, he was real good in that. Played a really good villain. villain. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so I watch a lot of stuff like that, um, and I'm not like really big on watching all the newer stuff. Although I did, we did do, um, oh God, what was that? The one where they're the housing people. Oh, they're the house. Uh, housing people. Oh yeah. Pacific Heights. No, no, no. It's a series on Netflix. It was a series. Like uh, a reality type series. No, 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 no. It was a kind of funny comedy. Housing people. They built houses and then they went by the government, whatever it was. The Bluths. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, Arrested Development. Arrested Development, yeah. You're Which, an Arrested Development guy. A lot of uh, comedy people are uh, Arrested Development people. I'm really into comedy and I do not like the show. We watched the whole thing. Watch the me and my buddy Mark down in, L in Orange County. We watched the whole thing. So Lucille Bluth, who is uh, Jessica Walter, starred in Grand Prix, which is a classic to me because it's one of the first films where they actually took footage inside the Formula One cars. And this movie was shot in what 1963. Oh. There's a lot of who racing else is scenes in, that? in there. Uh, James Garner was in it. Oh, James Garner. And a lot of actors. Was, people don't realize what a big star James Garner was. Yeah, and pretty much and Jessica Walter was in that, and she was really, I mean, she was really pretty. I mean, this she was pretty in Arrested Development. What? This is classic to me right here. Uh, yeah. Classic, I could watch classic. that all day. I like the, those sunglasses right there, the cat ones. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Two thumbs up. So, <clears throat> so yeah. And I didn't realize that. I'm like, who is that woman in there in the beginning scene in, in Grand Prix when they're in Monte Carlo at the Monaco Grand Prix? And it was her. And then I'm like, oh, that's Jessica Walter. She was in Arrested Development. So. This is, uh, I'm, wow. I've nubbed it. Wow. I'm done. I'm and just a chatty Cathy, I guess. smokable. Just a chatty Cathy. It's that construction makes it smokable down to there. And I'm, uh, interestingly, at the end, I'm getting a lot of, uh, this uh, piney, evergreen, Christmas kind of flavor, mm. which I hadn't gotten at all in the uh, rest of the cigar. But that's, it's really hot right now. I gotta, I gotta, gotta put it. that thing down. Yeah. So, but uh, as far as it goes for this cigar, definitely thumbs up. Thumbs up. Definitely a thumbs up cigar. Cause um, you know, as you said, the price point, uh, everything on there, smokeability, the flavors, just a thumbs up cigar, yeah. definitely. So, so uh, an available cigar, a current production cigar, limited production though, and you can only get it on friendsofhabanos.com in the cart. Yes, so just remember the next video after this one is gonna be the smoke along. So the Arturo Fuente 858 Natural um, is the one that we're gonna be smoking next. Yeah. So, so pick that, one up and smoke it with us next yep. time. So that's it, sayonara people.